Hello, welcome back to AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're talking about three-phase circuits. The title of this lesson is Balance Three-Phase Voltages and the Phase Sequence. Now we've hinted or introduced at least some of these concepts in the last couple of sections, but here we're going to, <clears throat> for the first time, really roll up our sleeves and really get down into some of the details here. The material in this section is going to be used for every single circuit that you solve that's a three-phase circuit. So it's critical material to master. It's very, very simple though. So I'm going to take it one step at a time and we'll go from there. <clears throat> okay, the first thing is I want to say a few things that I've already said in the past but remind you of them. And then we're going to write down and talk about the, the phase sequence, the positive phase sequence that we've talked about uh, a couple lessons ago. And then we'll introduce the negative phase sequence. And by the end of the lesson you'll understand what the difference is and you'll know how to handle problems that have each type. And we'll talk about uh, when we might run into that as we go. First thing, just a quick review. Balance three phase voltage. When we talk about that, we're talking about a set of three sinusoids, a balanced set of voltages is really what we're talking about. Three separate wires, three separate lines, three separate signals. Now the characteristics of a balanced set of three phase voltages are the following. There are three sinusoids. In other words, they can be expressed by cosines, uh, which means they can be expressed by phasers. Number two, they have equal amplitudes. So all three voltage signals in your set of three phase uh, uh, voltage, your balanced three phase set, they have to have the same amplitude in order to be balanced. Number three, they have to have equal frequencies. So if you're driving at 60 hertz or 95 hertz or 10,000 hertz or whatever it is, and you of course convert to radians per second when we write our sinusoid down, but anyway, whatever the frequency is, it has to be the same for, for signal A, signal B, and signal C in order to be a balanced set of three phase voltages. And the fourth thing is that all three of your voltages have to be out of phase with one another by 120 degrees. If you have all four of those things, then we call it a balanced set of three phase voltages. So again, three sinusoids, equal amplitudes, equal frequencies, out of phase with each other by 120 degrees. Now, we mentioned this in the past, but we're actually going to name these different phases. We have three wires. So we're going to name them. Uh, you could name them 1, 2, and 3, but we're going to actually name them voltage phase A, phase B, and phase C. And that's what you're going to see through almost every textbook that you'll use, phase A, B, and C. Um, the last thing here I want to mention before we start writing some stuff down is that the A phase, the A phase is what we consider to be a reference. You know, anytime you're dealing with almost anything in engineering, but definitely in circuits, you have a reference. In other words, you have to have something in the circuit that you anchor yourself to and say, I'm going to measure everything relative to that. So in previous circuit analysis, we have a reference ground or a reference potential, right? Like a reference node at the bottom of the circuit. That's always kind of our reference. We're measuring all the voltages relative to that reference node. In a three-phase circuit, because we have three different voltage sources and because they're basically identical except they, they differ with respect to the phase, you have to have something that you're measuring the phase relative to. You have to have some yardstick. So what we do is we typically, almost always, I'm not going to say always because you'll have some weird circuit you'll run into, you know, that may be different, but in a textbook, in a classroom situation, the A phase is going to typically be your reference. And that means typically the A phase will be zero degrees in your sinusoid, but then the other two phases will be plus or minus 120 degrees. And when we say plus or minus 120, we're measuring it relative to the A phase because A is zero. When A is zero, that means the sinusoid, the cosine, starts at a maximum, just like a cosine function does. But the other two are shifted relative to that default cosine graph that you have in your head. All right, now there are two phase sequences. And I'm going to actually get start writing some stuff down to talk about those. We have the pod, we have what we call a positive phase sequence, A, B, C. And that's actually something I actually introduced briefly. I touched on it in a couple lessons ago. But we actually have something called a negative phase sequence. And you'll see how they, they differ uh, uh, here in just a moment. So we have what we're going to talk about right now. We have the ABC phase sequence. Okay, now you'll see it written in a book as ABC phase sequence, but you might also see it written as a positive phase sequence. So in a book, for instance, in a, in a problem, in a homework, in, a, in an exam or a quiz situation, if your professor says, here's a circuit, it's a, got a positive phase sequence, go ahead and find the load, whatever, the load power or something. Well, positive phase sequence means a very specific thing that we're about to draw on the board. If it says, yeah, you have a, a, a negative phase sequence, which we're going to get to in a second, then you'll understand something about the source voltages that's going to be very important to solve that problem. So this terminology is really important. All right. So for an ABC phase sequence,